being an animal lover, there are places all over the world that you just can't wait to travel to so that you can experience their wildlife. Well, Indonesia was one of those places and I am just back from my 12 day trip there. This episode of Snake Bites is gonna be a recap of the things that I saw and I vlogged about. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this adventure. Albino temple turtle? Oh my god. Albino temple. Wow. Guys, take a look at this. This is actually an albino pignose turtle or an albino fly river turtle. I mean, there are literally just a handful of these in the entire world. Oh, this one's getting squirrely. I'm going to go ahead and put them back. So this tortoise lost its back legs and uh, Keo actually made a little wheelchair for him so he can cruise around. How cool is that? So Raja just finished eating, and it's just amazing to be able to be this close to a Komodo dragon and be able to pet him. I mean, what an amazing animal, huh? I mean, this is literally like a living dinosaur. Raja is just so incredible. This experience has been insane, man. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like when we see our first one in the wild, but I tell you what, we aren't gonna be up this close to it because it'd be trouble, but what a great animal, huh? So the reptile show and the, the contest hasn't started, but take a look at this monitor right here. Oh, that's beautiful. That thing is great. That's awesome. <laughs> How cool is that, huh? They just, wow, that thing is amazing. a little break from the competition to check out this beautiful animal here. Of course, a melanistic eastern blue tongue king. 
That is absolutely gorgeous. This is really the blue tongue skink that got me started in loving blue tongue skinks. I mean, there's just, to me, that's the best skink of all right there. I just absolutely love it to death. Wow, that is awesome. So I wanted to take a quick break right after that Cobra show to kind of express my thoughts of it right off the bat. You have to understand that there's good and bad of everything. Now, I'll be honest with you, any type of entertainment show like that that's a little bit harsh, I, 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 I'm, I get concerned about the way the animals are treated. With that being said, it certainly is amazing the bond that those people have with those animals. And what I mean by, I've never seen anybody that seemed to be as in tune with those animals as these people were. I mean, literally, there was probably six or seven times that I literally thought one of them was going to get bit. It was so close. Now, I'm not condoning it. You know, a lot of people would say, well, that's terrible showboating. It's reckless. I don't know really what to think. I know it was pretty entertaining, and I was kind of in awe with what I saw. That being said, there were certainly some points that I didn't even film because I was a little bit disappointed in, in, in the way that things were being handled. And as for the kissing the cobra thing, you know, I had mixed emotions about that too. I really wanted to do it because it's really amazing and it was a really incredible experience to be that close and to actually kiss a king cobra on the head. And, and I certainly knew I was in no danger because number one, I could read animals very well. Number two, I knew that those guys had everything completely under control. And it was really amazing how that cobra didn't even really pay attention to me when I had my lips on the back of its head. It was really just focused on the person in front of it and the eyes. And it, it just, those king cobras are so intelligent. So my question to you is, shows like that, are they good? Are they bad? Are they... Do they have, serve a purpose other than entertainment? Does it maybe spark people's interest and curiosity and maybe they'll go and research things and become reptile lovers or animal lovers? I'm not really sure. I think that it at least sparks curiosity, but I, I go ahead and comment down below and let me know what you think. And, and, and listen, I know I'm gonna catch some hate for this whole thing, and that's okay. Uh, I still, I would do it again because I think it was a, a chance in a lifetime. And, and, and to be honest with you, I'd be willing to bet that the majority of people that are going to say hateful things about how terrible I am for doing this would probably have done the same thing if given the opportunity. So I'm not going to let them drag me down. But let me know in the comments what you guys think.
hour and a half till we head to the airport, we're heading to the golf course to go look for reptiles. Sounds reasonable. All right, so we're looking for water monitors on the golf course uh, in this water pond right here. On this way. We're chasing a big ass water monitor right now at the golf course. But he's been hard to find. Hopefully we can get there before he gets away. Oh there it is. You see it guys? Watch out, watch out. There's two, there's two, there's two. It's going to your right. You guys see him? There he is. The wall, on the, the wall, wall, right over here, to your right. Right over here, right over here. There are two, there are two. Oh my gosh. There, there was two. Yeah, there's two water in there. Holy cow, that was awesome. I was chasing two of them. I could, I'm literally, you see its tails, guys? That's its tail right there. I'm within a foot of its tail, but I can't get there. Hang on, I'm gonna try to go over the top. All right? Oh, there's no way to get in here. There's just no way. Ow! It's so frustrating to be literally within three feet of this animal, and there's no way I can get to it. It's completely just thorn bushes all the way in, and that's probably why he's there. He knows I can't get to him. There's actually, there's two of them over here. There's two big ones. Look at guys, there's another one right here. Do you see it, it's right there. It's moving now, it's moving now. There it is, there it is. Going towards the water. Ah, it's right there. Damn it, so close. They know it, they got us. Right there guys, that's them. Wild water monitors. Oh my gosh, look at them. There's his head right there. There's his head. For some reason, when we were coming to this golf course, I was envisioning these little tiny water monitors, maybe babies or something, but I was never expecting these full grown six footers. And it was such an epic battle to try to get them, but they won this battle, guys. This is their terrain, man. It's like a jungle here, man. You can't get to them, and they know exactly where to hide. Oh my gosh, that that is a great way to spend the afternoon before heading to the airport. What do you guys think? How cool is that, huh? No, no, just one, just one, just one, just one, just one, just one. Nope, just one. Just one, just one. <laughs> nope, not giving you both. Just one. <laughs> I think this monkey is mad at me. That monkey was upset. Well, I guess this time when I say feisty monkey, I really mean it because I use that term all the time, but that was one feisty little monkey. These guys are Balinese and monkeys or macaques. Uh, and they are definitely habituated to humans. I mean, they know where their food is coming from and uh, they are all about trying to be little cheeky monkeys and try to steal your food for sure. But uh, they're so cute. Oh my god, how awesome was that? 
in the land of Komodo. We're gonna head to the hotel and do a little bit of work before we take that 67 mile drive to Asana Ular and then the 40 minute hike to the cave. So uh, this island is absolutely gorgeous, man. <sighs> this is when you say it's good to be alive. All right guys, I've done a lot of crazy things in my life, but uh, this one is right up there. We are heading into no man's land with very little idea of what's gonna happen. What do you think, Brian? You ready for this? I've been ready for this my entire life. Okay, man, let's get out of here. I hope, I, I hope you guys are watching this vlog. That means I survived. Like with most of my experiences when I'm traveling to uh, different countries, especially third world countries, there's always a lot of negotiation that goes on. So we had a driver arrange for 24 hours to take us, but they don't want to take us there unless we give them extra money. So we're trying to make sure that we're not going to get double charged. I don't have a problem with paying extra money if we didn't already pay for it. So we're trying to negotiate what the best way to go is. And uh, they don't want to go to the cave themselves, so they're just going to drop us. But it does sound like we have to get clearance from the locals because you're not allowed to go unless the locals tell you. So they're, you know, the experience for me tells me that we're going to have to bribe some locals to let us on their property. So uh, this is all part of the travel when you're doing this type of thing. It'll, it'll all work out. Get the worse the road is, the more narrow, the more tore up. Just, uh, it's just getting more difficult. But they assure us that we will be able to get there. Exactly when? I'm not sure, because it looks like these roads were uh, paved maybe 25 years ago. No one's done any maintenance on them ever since. <laughs> we're literally crawling. I have no idea how long this is going to go on, but it'll all be worth it. We better catch the retakes. Just hit the village. Okay, so after a very long, bumpy, somewhat treacherous road, we are at uh, the village and we need to go to the head of the village to ask for permission to go to uh, the Rita cave. So. <laughs> We've stopped off here and we're going to do a ritual to give a safe passage into the cave. Um, the elder did strap on a big knife, but I <laughs> it leaves you for a little bit of concern, but uh, I think everyone is seems to be excited about this. It's definitely a first for me. I've never been through this, and uh, but uh, I, I'll be happy to get past this and get hiking to the cave. I'd rather deal with uh, reticulated pythons and bat guana than a tribe that I don't know what their intentions are. So we have come as far as we can in a car, and we are now on foot. Uh, we have the elders in front of us leading our way, uh, as well as one other guide. And um, sounds like it's about an hour hike to the cave now. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but uh, so far so good. At least we're alive and seems like everyone's friendly. We've been walking for about a half an hour now. We are definitely really deep in the bush. Uh, I'll be honest with you these guys weren't with us I don't know how we would get out of here so this worked out really well uh, this is a crazy I wonder who found this I mean this is way deep in the bush I mean we're talking we're half an hour in and we're still only halfway there oh my gosh take a look at this guys we are freaking here man at the opening of the cave This is great. So 
So this is the, we're gonna do a ritual to bless us, to make sure that we'll be safe. And then we're off to explore the cave. Oh, there's our dig right, right there. There's dig right there, guys. Can I get it? We are only probably 10 feet in the cage when we came across our first reticulated python. You know, so oftentimes I go to places where the lure is much bigger than the actual event. The fact that you think, oh, there are just loads of reticulated pythons, and then you get there and you don't see anything whatsoever. But in this case, we were literally 10 feet into the cave. We came across this little bugger here. And he was a little feisty at first, but you can see he's totally calmed down now. I can't imagine what else is in this cave at 10 foot in we come across our first reticulated python. Oh my gosh. This was definitely worth the trip. The first ever reticulated python I've ever seen in a while. Whew, that's awesome. You guys know that I love catching snakes, but I love releasing them even more. Let this little bugger go and see what he does. There you go, little guy. There you go. Wow. That was awesome, man. Really walking in. Two feet. Bad guano. Not sure where you're stepping. Could be a re kick in here. It's definitely crazy. Just out of the famous retic cave. We only came across one retic. And we went kind of far back, but to be honest with you, I just couldn't breathe. That back guano, the confined feeling, the muggy air, it was really difficult. Once we were a couple of turns past the opening where it was complete pitch darkness, it was one of the harder things that I've done. I mean, just I didn't realize how claustrophobic I was gonna feel. And, and the fact that I couldn't breathe, uh, I think was the biggest problem. So. We turned back, but I got to see a lot of bats, and we got to see the one retic. Yeah, sure, I'd love to say that we found 20 retics. The fact is we found one wild reticulated python, and that's really all I cared about. This whole journey from Bali to here, the long drive, the, the bizarre rituals with you know the, the villages, it was all worth it. This was an absolute success. So there it is. What amazing adventures we had in Indonesia. I hope that one day you can get there as well. That country has so much to offer. There's really truly amazing destinations all over the world and I can't wait to get to see even more of them and of course share them with you on Snake Bites as well as my daily vlog. And as always guys, I'm Facebook and tweeting and Instagram my way through things. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites.